This is RC. It's your girl, K Marie. K hey, Wilk. It's your boy, Black. It's your girl, Lady. And I'm Sir. And you're listening to 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020. 2020 podcast. 2020. I did that one for you. <laughs> What's in the <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Business Minute. I'm your host, Sir, and today I got a special guest, Miss Rachel McGatney, aka Rachie Mack. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. And you? No complaints. No complaints. A little tired, but no complaints. <laughs> now, uh, Miss Rachie, uh, if you could just tell our audience what it is that you do. Well, I am a. I am an actress. I am a writer. I. I am also a director. I'm also a cre- the creator of Socially Awkward, which is a comedy sketch show that we we pretty much put out videos maybe once a week or once every other week, just sporadic. And um, it's, it's formed with a group of creative people. It's probably about 15 of us now. And we just work together. We put together comedy sketch shows. And, and we just try to entertain. Sometimes we do drama. But majority of the videos that we come out with, they're they're comedy. And that's pretty much majority of what I do. <laughs> okay. And we make sure to go follow on Facebook and YouTube. But um, how long have you guys been active together? We've been active together since um, our first episode was Black Friday in November. But we formed together since September. Um, I just randomly, I asked, you know, I had the the courage to ask everyone on Facebook, hey, who want to join me and, you know, act silly together and put together some videos, pretty much. <laughs> and, you know, so a few, a lot of people was like, hey, I want to do it. A lot of people said they want to do it. But when it came down to actually doing it, I would say maybe my, the people that still are with me right now. They are the only ones that actually came forward and did it with me and actually stayed consistent with it. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a couple of people that weren't able to do it, but the majority of the people that are with me right now, they've been there since the beginning. And I just appreciate them because they really work with me because um, I can't do it all on my own. Right. And it's a lot of stuff that I can't come up with that they help me to see what I'm missing. Like some things I might think, like I like somebody can tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, Rachel, this is not funny. I need people <laughs> to tell me that. And I appreciate right. them. They tell me that my brother, he's he's so outspoken. He want to tell me, hey, this isn't funny. <clears throat> <And> what <laughs> you know, what <clears throat> that mean? I mean, I don't even know. what. The, well, I don't know why he put that in there. Whatever. But, yeah. What were we talking about again? <laughs> oh, man. No, no, no. You're good. We was talking about, you know, how long have you guys been active? But Yeah, we've been active, I guess, since September. It, it hasn't even been a year. And we formed together like a family. We try to, you know, I try to have this family formed business. I don't want us to be hating what we do. I don't want, I want to, every time we come together, they enjoy to be together. We we love each other. We try, I mean, sometimes we have our disagreements and we, we don't always get along, but then we come back together and we be, you know, just like a regular family. And that's how I want us to always to be because I don't, I, don't, I hate the nine to five type of environment. Nobody want to be at work. Mm-hmm. I want us to go to somewhere where we actually want to be there. And that's how our creativity starts to flow because we want to be in this environment. Right. And that's what I want to, that's what I do with my team. And I'm just, just trying to make us better and better each, each month, each time, each time we get together. It still haven't even been a year yet, but we're, uh, we're getting closer and closer every time we get along, every time we get together and make videos. No, and uh, I'll tell you this from experience because we just hit our one year mark. Oh, really? That time will fly. Oh, okay. That time will mm-hmm. absolutely fly. And the beauty of it is you don't notice it. Like you said, when you're working and doing what you love, it goes by so quickly. Yeah. And another thing, uh, I don't know if it is for you, but with doing something that you're passionate about, you find it to be kind of sort of a catharsis. So when you are out there working, it may be a rough work week, but when you come to back to the project you love, mm-hmm. ah, you can release that energy, you know, really unwind a bit in what you're doing. So that's mm-hmm. definitely something to, be, I guess, appreciate about doing something like that. Yeah. And so 
that leads me to my next question. You know, uh, everyone has a start somewhere, something that created that spark. What inspired you to just go out there and say, hey, I want to do something that's funny. You know, will y'all come with me? What what made you step <laughs> out there and make yourself vulnerable? Because it's a big step. Well, something I don't, I don't think I ever told anybody this. I may Uh-oh. have. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I always wanted to be in a comedy sketch show. Like I always used to watch mm. Mad TV and Saturday Night Live. And I used to watch all that. Oh, and um, just all the little little shows, you know, Keenan and Kale and, well, that's not a comedy sketch. But you know what I'm saying. Just all the comedy sketch shows back in the day when we were kids. And and I was watching Mad TV. I wasn't even supposed to watch Mad TV. Nobody was. was. (laughs) Don't feel bad. And Saturday Night Live, learning about stuff I ain't supposed to be learning about. (laughs) And that's what I used to watch. And it always inspired me to want to do this. Um, And then, I guess, I just always... I I already had little videos of my own mm. by myself. I did little videos, and you know they they were okay. They did pretty good, but not as good it it is now because I have a team with me that um, pushes me forward and you know fill those little spaces that can help me to do get better. And we just try to push everybody else, you know, to get better. All right, elevation. I love yeah. that. I love that. All right. So now along the way, you know, you haven't quite hit a year yet. Mm-hmm. But you did mention that, you know, sometimes things happen. You know, some people may fall by the wayside that want to help but aren't able to. Were there any other obstacles that you encountered along the way to get to this point? To get to this point? um, Well, no real major obstacles because we're still in going in baby steps. Mm-hmm. But we, every like I said, the, everybody that was with us at the beginning is not with us now had to make, you know, executive decisions and also had to, you know, I had, I'm a very nice person and so it's kind of hard for me to be that mean person or to kick people out. And so I had to just, I have to make decisions based off the group. I have to make uh, wise decisions and I can't, I can't use my emotions and I had to cut the emotions off. And a lot of times I, it's hard for me to do that. And I, I guess that would be the only real obstacle you know, having to step into a field that I've never been in before. I've never been a manager before. So I'm pretty mm-hmm. much, in a way, I'm kind of like managing. Even though it's not a, we had a nine-to-five job, it's a group of people. Yes. And we're trying to make it into a business. Mm-hmm. Well, really, it is a business. It's just not, we're just not up there yet, the place that we want to be. But it's still a business. Mm-hmm. And I'm over these people. And it's like I'm doing something new. I'm trying to be a manager. And also trying to be the manager that I needed in other jobs because managers nowadays they're so so struck on power and trying to get authority and they just have to be mean to you in order to get authority and it's stupid and I'm not trying to learn from those bad decisions of those bad managers having so many bad managers and taking some of the stuff of the good managers and trying to put that together and be who I need to be to the leader in this group and form you know what I need to do for this group and so that we can get to where we need to be and inform the dream, the, the vision that I have for us. Okay. All right. I like that. Taking life experiences and, and melding it into your own, you know, way of life. I respect that. Mm-hmm. I, I do the same. Mm-hmm. All right. So my next question, it's a little bit of a personal one mm-hmm. because you did mention that, you know, you haven't quite made it to the business yet where, you know, you can live off of just yet. Same here. It's definitely a journey within itself. So that leads me to ask you, how did you find that balance between work and your personal life with, you know, uh, with Socially Awkward as well, a part of that? Um, I'm still getting used to it, but I'm getting better at it, balancing my personal life. Um, because honestly, I started this when I was dealing with a lot of personal stuff. So it's like, I guess I kind of became a pro at dealing with things while going through chaos. Mm. So, I mean, it's actually kind of a distraction from, I guess it was a distraction. I'm over the things that I was going through, but it was a distraction. It was helping me to cope with the things that I was dealing with. Right. So that would, it kind of pushed me, you know, hey, make sure you get this done, start getting this show together. And then also I had my time 
you know, to be a mom and do work and everything that I need to do personal life. Um, but it's hard balancing, balancing it. I can't talk, but (laughs) balancing it, but, um, (laughs) 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 but it's not that hard. It's just kind of got, you kind of got to make a schedule, um, and off days you have to get up. You can't sleep in too late all mm-hmm. the time. Um, if you want to be successful, you gotta wake up. And I had to, I had to change a lot of routines, a lot of bad habits. That's really how I had to learn how to get cope with and deal with everything, with personal and you know work life and everything like that. Just get rid of bad habits and try to make a better schedule. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I understand being a mother can be an X factor within itself Mm -hmm. because there are unaccounted situations that you can't account for. And and this is a little bit off the the record Mm -hmm. uh, for the questions I had for you, but just a a personal question. Do you find yourself sometimes finding like an an hour or so where you're like, hey, I'm free. Let me use this hour to maximize my potential on socially hour. Let me take this hour or these two hours I may have to myself and let me apply it to my craft and, you know, to benefit something else. Do you find yourself doing that? Um, no, this is what I pretty much do. Uh, because you know, they go to school, they're still in school, they're little kids. So like say if I'm off Mm -hmm. that, that whole time that they're at school, I try to work on whatever I need to work on then. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, sometimes it interferes a little bit, but not really. I don't, I don't try not to let it interfere because I mean, I'm a single mommy, so I have to, I have to be hands on. It's just me. I mean, yes, their father is in their life, but when we're one-on-one, so when I have the kids, I have to be hands on. And, um, so I, it's not really that hard for me to interfere with those two things. Okay. I respect that. All right. So understanding that you know you haven't quite hit a year yet but still you said you've been acting uh i'm pretty sure that you have a plenty a myriad of experiences was there any one experience that stood out as the most memorable talking about my acting experience Mm -hmm. overall hmm Hmm. honestly i know even though it just happened um i would say the part that i just played um It's uh, the Harriet Tubman part that I just played. I played that February the 24th. That was the other Sunday. Um, It was a play at Solid Rock Ministries. It was put on by Kevin Lavelle Young. Mm -hmm. And it was a big group of us, maybe about 15, 20 of us. And we, it was a black history play. And I had the opportunity to be Harriet Tubman. And it was a kind of an unscripted improv play. And you had to really know, you know, how to do improv in order to be in that play. Everybody in that play was really, really good. Um, so, in that part, when we were, first of all, when we were rehearsing the part, I wasn't doing, you know, how I wanted to do. I wasn't doing as well as I wanted to do. They was like, oh, you need to be a little bit tougher. You're still acting like a mom. I mean, I have a, I'm a mommy. I can't help it. <laughs> they were saying you, you still act. You need to have, be a little bit tougher. Harriet Tubman is tough. You can't be. You can't act like a mom this time. So I was like, okay, let me do my research. I did research on this part. This is the first time I ever did research to play a character. Mm. I, um, I, uh, I practice it. I didn't say exactly what I practiced, but I actually said exactly something way off from what I practiced. I did something completely different. I kind of just felt what my heart, because when I researched Harriet Tubman, I I realized we had a lot in common. So I realized this is okay. I need to really get into this character. So when I got up there for that little monologue, it was probably maybe a two minute monologue. I was like, okay, I need, this is my time to really show people who I really am and how good I really can be. So anytime you have an opportunity to be great, just be great. Mm-hmm. And so I used that that opportunity to try to be as as great as I can be. I tapped into that character, and um, what I decided to do, 
I pretty much spoke from my heart and a lot of the stuff that I was saying I went back and saw that video of myself and I was like what I'm saying I was saying um we're not slaves anymore you know act like we're free act like you're free we're not you're not slave anymore let's act like we're free stop thinking like a slave and act like free and I didn't realize in a way not to sound cocky but I feel like God was trying to use me through those words and I didn't realize until after I looked back and looked at that video like you can what I was saying you could take it in a different way in a different context mm -hmm. and use it however you meant but to me I felt like I was speaking in a different way more deeper than just slavery deeper than what we were just looking at you know we got to think stop thinking like a slave we had to act like we are free right. as black people pretty much I mean anybody but really much Black people, we need to stop thinking like we're a slave and act like we are free, you know. But yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't. No, no, no. I, I was with you. I was with you. I almost teared up a little bit because that's definitely true. Um, because I was going to ask, you know, how do you prepare for a part like that? And um, I agree. I read a lot in college about Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I read was that she kept a weapon with her mm -hmm. and uh, formerly a shotgun. And it wasn't for the masters. It was for if you come with me, you gonna come with me. But if you try to run back, I'm going to shoot you. You're, you're not about to bring us down when we're trying to better ourselves. Yeah. And I, I hate to say I'm not encouraging violence against anyone, but metaphorically, she's right. Yeah. You know, you can try to save someone, but the instant that people try to dream, bring you back down from where you came to a point where you're not flourishing like you should, you do have to cut them off. You do have to deaden that part of yourself. And that's, I'm going through something like that right now. <laughs> so that definitely spoke to me. Yeah. So that's deep. That's deep. That's real. Ooh, man. Mm -hmm. Caught me in the soul with that one. <laughs> All right. So, um... That leads me to my next question, because with every high, there's a low. Mm -hmm. So at any point, did you feel that you wouldn't be successful? And if so, who or what changed your mind? Hmm. While doing the show? Um... Or while acting? Just see. any... Um, yeah, there were some moments. I say, I say when I first first started doing the little videos the little skits that i would do that may be maybe about two minutes long um they always usually be under five minutes and it was like okay i would get attention i'll get a lot of attention on some and then some i wouldn't get that much attention mm -hmm. and so it would kind of make me a little discouraged like, um, do really do people really think I'm funny? Am I really good? Am I okay? Because I started off with just comedy, and I'm just now kind of breaking off into a new branch of I saw your message on Facebook mm -hmm. with the drama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, but just just a little discouragement, but nothing major to make me want to stop. But I just I just what kept me going? I would motivate myself. Um. I got to the point where I just I had to motivate myself. God kind of instructed me on how I can motivate my own self. I what I do is I have this routine where I I look at um, YouTube videos, motivational videos, just pretty much every day. If not a motivational video, I'm listening to a motivational sermon or something inspirational to keep me inspired. I try to do it every day. Sometimes I get off, but I have that's like my routine. I try to do it in the morning because the way you start your morning, your day, you know, it help it travels throughout the whole day. You know, sure. you start in, in a, a horrible way, then you <laughs> just go have a horrible day. So I try to be inspired and motivate myself you can't wait for nobody else to motivate me so I just mm. motivate myself in the beginning of the day and um I just get so off track what were we talking about <laughs> no 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 keep going keep going listen this is your interview I meant to tell you that yeah. this this is no time constraint this is your story I'm talking to you I want to mm. know what's going on in your head go I'm, I'm serious I'm 100% serious what were we talking about? Well, the question was, <laughs> at any point did you feel that you wouldn't be successful? Yeah. And if so, 
who or what changed your mind. But yeah. Oh yeah, I was saying that the motivational videos or the motivation, the the ability to motivate myself changed my mind. The the fact that God helped me to motivate myself, helped me. He put it in me. Like it was like like I'll have a a question or um, you can get revelation from anything. Like I'll have a question, I ask God, Hey, do I should I do this or blah blah blah, or um, or how should I do this? How can I stop this? Blah blah blah. And then he'll, he'll send the question, the answer in maybe a video, like in a it'll, direct way, mm-hmm. and it, it'll be direct. And it'll, it'll, I know it's God because of the fact that it'll be right on time, or it'll be, it will be perfect, a perfect answer for what I asked. It'll be uh, pertaining specifically to what yeah. you're talking about. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. That's why you have to be kind of like open spiritually and naturally to different things. Because I mean, a, a person who don't is not a, have a spiritual mind. They won't see that. They don't realize that you can get revelation from pretty much anything. You can read something. You can see something on TV. Or anyone. Anyone, a kid, but you can't look at the vessel. You have to look at the message from. Some people don't have the mind to look at. You know, and listen to what somebody's saying. They think, oh, it's just a kid. They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, God can use a kid, you know. And But, yeah, God helped me to motivate myself. That helped, helped me to keep going during the discouraging moments. Okay. All right. So that leads me to my long-term question. <laughs> and if you need a moment to think about this, I'll edit it out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> Where would you like to see yourself as an actress and socially awkward as a brand in one year, three years, and ten years? Okay. Um, well, I'm just going to give a little bit. I don't believe in telling all my, my plans. But um, for one year, I feel like by then, somebody going to see us by then. Somebody going to see. <laughs> as much as we work, we work hard. We it take a lot to put those little videos. It may seem like just five minute videos to y'all, but that's like three hours of work. And then our videographer, he has to he have to go back and edit those things. Mm. Then he got three or four, five, six, seven, eight jobs on top of it. <laughs> so now we gotta sit here, we gotta do all this work on top of our own nine to fives. And we're dedicated. So everybody that's in the group is not there just to just be there. Like they re- they all have jobs or all doing something or a parent or something. They don't have nothing. They're not just sitting down. They right. all have some kind of life. And we're like really, really trying to like really, you know, start a movement. It's not, it's bigger than just us. It's way bigger than us. But y'all figure that out eventually. Soon y'all will. I guess that y'all figure that out by year three. And so, mm, uh, <laughs> nice transition. I see what you did there. I see what you did. Go on ahead. And then, so you say year 10? Yeah. Year 10, uh, we're going to be in somebody's TV. What uh, channel? All the channels. Ooh, a lot of channels. Right. Multiple channels. All right. All right now. It's probably not going to, I don't know if it's going to be a show or a movie, but, but it's going to be on somebody's TV. So. All right. But yeah. Okay, look, I, I'm, I'm with you. you. Got me hyped with you. I'm gonna be checking out OWN. <laughs> oh, I know them. That's right, G. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask you something off the record. Off the record. Who's top three favorite actresses? Go. Top three favorite actresses: Jennifer mm. Lewis. Ooh, um, good choice. Dang. <laughs> I know. Um. Oh, uh-oh. Let me think. Oh, Angela Bassett. Um, okay. Black don't crack, I'm trying to tell y'all. I really like Taraji, Taraji Henson, too. Um, I don't have... Th- let me get, let me pick a few more. Um, <laughs> Go for five. Can you do five? Probably. I like... Um, you know, and if I may comment on Taraji, Taraji's angry face scares the hell out of me. <laughs> like, I legit believe when she angry. Mm-hmm. Like, um, what was that movie she did? Um, what, well, A Cheating Husband? God, it just but came out not long ago. Did. Oh, yeah, good point, good point. Well, the first one being Baby Boy, the first. <laughs> Jody. Um, I was getting cheated on. Yeah. Golly, that's true. 
I don't know what's, what's Y'all better wrong. stop typecasting my stop girl. Stop doing Taraji like this. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> stop cheating on Oh, Taraji. my God. <laughs> wow. Wow. Wow, my you bad. You said the one she just did? Yeah, it's like... um. Oh, um... It's a word. Um, it, yeah, yeah, it's the word, basically, for cheating. Um... Matri not matrimony. Um, acrimony. Acrimony. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's yeah, it. that was a good movie. That was crazy. And it, I don't, just for, I'm not gonna give it away just for people who didn't see it, but it's a really good movie. And it's, man, it's twisted. As a black man, <laughs> I feel like I ain't ish. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. I was like, man, we gotta do better. <laughs> Cause not one time. I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna be quiet. I'm be quiet. Um, but go ahead. Anyone else? Um, you Uma Thurman. Um, oh yes, Kill Bill was my joint. I love that movie. One or two? Which one was better? Probably one. Yeah, I like agree. one because she killed like eighty-eight people at one oh, time. Crazy. Eighty-eight people by herself. You know they it's edited so that scene. They edited it. You know, you remember when she plucks the guy eye and it goes black and white? Yeah. The whole reason they did that is because the MPAA wouldn't allow it because it was too much gore. As and then yeah. then yeah. yeah now people are showing everything. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like wow. <laughs> Time has really changed. I was just talking to someone about that and I'm a big Quentin Tarantino fan mm -hmm. and um that I, no offense to the second one but the first one was just excellent to me yeah excellently uh from fight choreography to actual acting mm -hmm. i think my favorite scene and i'm sorry i'm gonna let you get back to you mm -hmm. but i just love that movie that's probably my <laughs> top five movies yeah um when she threatens the kid um uh, what's her name her name was vernita green in the movie but um the, uh, the black lady vivica, vivica fox, fox daughter. when she was like if you're still salty about it you know <laughs> When you grow up, come and holler at me. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> She's letting her know right yeah, now. Yeah, like, if, if, if you still feeling salty about me <laughs> calling, killing your mom, come and holler at me. Got a scar for life. Man. <laughs> but go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, Last one. This one is mainly because of creativity. She haven't really done nothing that um that stuck out to the whole world yet but Issa Rae I just mm. like her as a person and how creative she is and she has some of the same goals and things going on that I'm trying to get to like we're very similar as well and that's why I like Issa Rae pretty much as because of who she is and okay. what she do and her, huh more than her career yeah more than just yeah yeah as far as a person yeah I really like her Okay, all right, I respect that. So, that leads me to my final question. I have to fan it out on you, geeking out, I should say. <laughs> um, my final question I dedicate to the person that's listening to this interview mm -hmm. because you never know. But they might be listening to this before they take that leap and that gamble on themselves, you know, doing something that may have never been done. So, what words of encouragement would you have for that person who's starting out on their own? Okay, um, if you're starting on your own, just, you have to, even, it don't matter how, how tough it get, you have to keep going, and don't, don't let what people say about you discourage you, because people are going to say a lot of things that's opposite of who you really are, mm -hmm. like, people said a lot of things about me that I'm, I'm not at all, like, people take who I am the wrong way all the time because they haven't gotten a chance to get to know me. But it also is myself. I had trouble in the past where I didn't let people get to know me. But I'm not who people say they think I am. People think who I am. And I feel like, you know, you, you have to eventually listen to who you are. You have to figure yourself out. Make sure you figure who you are out because you're. if you don't figure who you are out, then who other people, what other people say are going to just get into your head and you're not even going to know who you are. Like, like people think, people probably thought that I was stupid or um, like people probably thought that, people thought I, was, I wasn't as smart as I am because I didn't talk as much mm -hmm. when I was younger. And there's nothing stupid about me. I'm very, very smart. 
I'm I'm modest, honestly. Mm. I'm borderline genius. I have a high IQ. I, I'm not stupid at all. I just yeah. don't talk to people. I don't talk to everybody. Mm. And I have enough common sense to know who not to talk to and who to talk to because some people have bad spirits and some people I just, just stray away from. Like, you know, and some people think that I'm not good enough because I'm, I don't have a lot. You know, and that doesn't have anything to do with anything. And also, sometimes people, let me see, I'm trying to think of things that people misjudge me about. And that I, this is the reason why I'm saying it, and then I'll get into why I'm saying this. Um, I had a baby out of wedlock. People thought I was going to have a, a an abortion. I kept my child. I had I got married and got a divorce. I still I still kept going. I I dropped out of college. I still kept going. You do not have to be what people think you're gonna be. You do not have to be what society wants you to be. You don't have to be what your parents want you to be. It does not matter. You be who you want to be. You figure out who you are in yourself so you can be confident who you are so that when people say, oh, you're stupid, you know you're not stupid. You got a, you got a 120 IQ. You're not stupid. You, the people say, oh, you're, you're an idiot because you come from this, this bad background or this, this bad area. No, you know who you are. You're not your environment. And people think, Oh, you're you're not gonna succeed because you had a baby early at as, as a teenager, or you got a divorce. And that does not stop you. If anything, the things that you've been through should make you push harder. You put your pain and your passion. You put that stuff together and put it and, and apply it to where you're trying to be and where you're trying to go. And just always stay encouraged. Don't listen to other people. Listen to you. You just follow your heart, your intuition, and listen to what God tell you to do because other people they ain't uh, always know what they're talking about. So you listen to what you feel in your heart and listen to what God is telling you to do. All right. Man. <laughs> Ooh. Lord have mercy. All right. Um, I'm, I'm speechless. I, I, I can't even sum that up again. <laughs> um, no, it, like, you're right. You have to be confident in who you are so that other people's thought of you or their perception of you doesn't affect how you see yourself. So wholeheartedly agree. That's something that a lot of people don't get to learn at an early age. You know, we're in an age of media and spin and people can turn anything to look like anything just with a couple of types on the keyboard. So it's important to know in yourself who you are. Self-confidence is everything right now because a lot of things are fake out there. But yeah. um, Miss Rachie, if anybody wants to get in touch with you or if they wanted to see more work of, of yours or want to see more work of Socially Awkward, you know, how could they get in contact with you or see more work that you guys have been producing? You guys can go to Facebook. On Facebook, you have to type in Socially Awkward, no spaces, Socially Awkward, G-C-S-S. Um, it will be a show. It's going to say it's going to be gold and black when you see it on Facebook. And then also you can follow us on YouTube, Socially Awkward, G-C-S-S. On YouTube, type that in the search bar and it should show up all of our videos um, from from now to all the way back when we first started, mm. um, we put out random videos at random times. So just you just check back with us as every day. You might see something every day. You might see something every other day. So just check back with us on Facebook and YouTube. All right. Well, we also have a. I'm sorry. We also have a it. Instagram page as well, or little clips. So also, if you want to look at some of the clips that we have on Instagram, socially awkward GCSS, and put that all together. No spaces. All right. No spaces. No filter. No nothing. <laughs> all right. Well, Miss Miss Mac, you've been a pleasure. Uh, I appreciate you coming through all the way out here <laughs> to to my humble abode to do this interview. Um, like I said, um. We did an interview with Buck, uh, Chantel, mm -hmm. and uh, they was like, well, you got an interview with Rachel. Yeah, we got an interview with Rachel. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, where is she? And uh, we came to the uh, the play, Welcome to Hell, mm -hmm. and we saw you, 
and you disappeared. I'm not gonna lie, it's like you I vanished. I don't. We well. I'm gonna tell the truth right here. <laughs> that chicken y'all was serving was like everything. It was. I don't Listen know here. Who made it. Listen. I don't want to sound stereotypical, <laughs> but that chicken was bussing. Like it was. I don't know what it. I don't you know, know who did it. Too? <laughs> hey, look. When the cast was missing, and they was like, "Oh, they eating chicken." I was like, "I totally understand," because that chicken was good. But um, I might have to edit that out part. But um, <laughs> you keep that in there. <laughs> I'm so serious. I'm so not kidding. <laughs> we was back at home. We was like, what's that? Yeah. But um, is there anyone else from Social Opera you want to give a shout out to? Your castmates, your videographer, editors, anybody? <clears throat> Go ahead. Go ahead. I got to get them. Because <laughs> I, I can edit that the space out. So you good. Give them a shout out real quick. Because I don't want to miss nobody. And then somebody getting naked. Oh, you just not going to say my name. <laughs> I ain't got time. <laughs> okay. Go, go for it. Go for it. I just want to give a shout out to my cast and crew. Um, I appreciate y'all for being there with me. And I just want to give a shout out to Chantel McKinney, Marcellus Hudson, the videographer, um, um, Young Steel, that's my brother, TJ Harrison, Donald Williams. Kevin Lavelle Young, Kelvin Drakes, Angela Holt Jordan, Kayla Williams, Young Rowe, James Lett, fat bastard, <laughs> <laughs> um, Gaither <laughs> Madison, Aaron Gamble, and Lecta Brown. Um, let me see, I wanted to say something about uh, Marcellus Hudson. When I came to Marcellus about the idea, because we're pretty much business partners, I came to him about the idea, and I didn't think he was going to agree with this so soon. Like, he just, like, okay. Like, he just, like, okay. I, like, as if he was waiting for me to come to him about this idea. You'd be That's, surprised. Yeah. You'd be surprised. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not kidding. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Uh, I know Buck for a minute. I actually, I ran into Buck indirectly. Uh, we both went to the VO, VOGMAs, mm -hmm. and he was doing video there, and we were doing interviews. We're standing side by side with each other, just sitting there, and we chop it up a little bit, but get back to what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And then one day, we were just like, everybody kept talking about Bama Boy Buck, Bama Boy Buck, and we did the, we did the presentation of different awards there, yeah. but I didn't know that's who it was. I just knew Marcellus. And, and then he was like, yeah, I'm Bama Boy Buck. I'm like... Man, get out my face, bro. I've been sitting around you this whole time. And uh nah, we we we're we're cool. That's my boy. That's my boy. He been introducing me to a lot of people and just I really appreciate him too. Humble guy. Yeah, he's real humble. Um what I actually just interviewed his mom this morning too. Oh really? Mm hmm <laughs> Miss Andrea, she's sweet. Yeah. But and um We um but yeah, we had um my brother, he he's the one who made lot. Like, we have like this little intro music. Mm. Um, I'm glad you said that because yeah, I'll come back to that. We have this little intro music. Let me see if I can find it real quick. He made it for us. He been he made it a long time ago. It's crazy how things just work together. He he just put it together for me a long time before I even thought about the idea. But I saved it. I just I was like, nah, I don't want to use it for this. I don't want to use it for this. And I have to think, okay, this is what I want to use it for. Exodacy. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I like that. But, that's it, yeah, that's our intro. That's our little theme music. <laughs> no, that's, that's dope. Um, I, I love that. I'm looking to uh, hire somebody to do our intro. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. right now, I'm the only one who does our music. And it's cool, you know, but it's like, don't get me wrong. I like what I do, but <laughs> I know there's people out there that can do better, you know, yeah. like leagues better. And I, I want to get somebody to do ours like that because, yeah, y'all is, is dope. Y'all production value, that's yeah. what I'm trying to get. <laughs> I'm for real. Not trying to flatter you. I'm so serious. But um, Thank you. no, no, no. Y'all are doing great. I'm definitely proud of you guys progressing this far and not even at a year yet though. Yeah. Like yeah. that's something you gotta sit back and really absorb because you can't compare your now to somebody's 
you know, three years, five years, and that's what you really don't see behind the scenes. You just see somebody successful, and you're like, man, I ain't there yet, but look, you know, they've been doing this for 15 years or so, you know, so. But yeah, um, I really appreciate you. You've been a pleasure. Um, that's it. We out, man. All right.